Good day, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Paul is away at the National Yearling Sales in Johannesburg, so joining us is our regular super sub and Manning Rangers league winner, Gavin. Morning, bud. Good to be here. We treated to some good soccer the last couple of nights. Yeah, it has been. So let's see if it continues through uh, Europa tonight, so some good games. And, uh, well, we'll get Steve on the line shortly, but it's Man United at Chelsea tonight, Gav, so I'll get your thoughts on that about Man United and the game. But we kick off, as always, with our last one standing competition. Going into round eight, we had 11 entries going through. Seven went out. Unfortunately, Brighton took care of Ashley Berger, Dave Harker, the boy from the south, and Barry Humphreys. Tottenham eliminated Carol Whitehead. Crystal Palace knocked out Katerina Harito. And Leicester City eliminated Calvin Cass. Four guys remain. Ravesh Badassi and Alan Costa sailed through when Man City won easily, and as did Gary Citroen and Alan Duplessis, who were on Newcastle to beat Norwich City. Saturday, 11 a.m. is closing time for the four guys that are left, and as for the three ladies all went, who went out, we still have the 1,000 Rand voucher from Sector Apparel, so they will continue this weekend until we have a winner. We now cross over to our UK correspondent in our Fulham studio. Steve, good morning. Morning, Bud. Morning, Gav. Morning, Steve. Uh, Steve, uh, cost me a few rand the other night. I thought the league would have been over with Fulham, but uh, apparently Forrest played well. They did play well. I mean, we probably had, I mean, we had, a, we had most of the game, had uh, most of the chances, but we, we gave a sloppy goal away. But they, they're just stumbling over the line. I mean, they'll do enough in the end, but it's a shame that we haven't quite finished with the flourish that, uh, you know, we would have hoped. But, um, you know, it's still, there's a lot to play for beneath us. Yeah. You know, with Forest, Forest winning and Bournemouth dropping points, it makes it very interesting at uh, going for that second automatic place. Yeah, but I'm sure at the beginning of the season, Steve, uh, you, you would have accepted that you're going up regardless of the last three or four games, yeah? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, to get promoted with four games to go, you know, that's, that's fine. And, and, and it's in our own hands. Effectively, we need one point uh, yeah. from, to, to be guaranteed uh, the title. Uh, I mean, it might be that Bournemouth drop points at the weekend. We don't need another, you know, point. But yeah. um, you know, I, 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 I'm still confident that uh, we'll get it. But and it's fine. You know, at the beginning of the season, it's all about going up. We've yeah. done that. Anyway, talking about going up, Steve, there were two cracker Champions League games, especially the Man City game. Surely, Man City should have won by more. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw the highlights because obviously I was at. Uh, Fulham, but um, you know, looked looked fantastic. I mean, Real Madrid, you know, just still have quality. You know, give Benzema a chance and he'll sure. take it. Yeah. City are going to still feel that uh, they've got enough, you know, because away from home they're just as strong. So, I mean, that's set up to be a fantastic game, and you know, whoever goes through, you know, will be worthy finalists. Yeah, a bit disappointed with Liverpool in the first half, but you know, you can't blame Villarreal. When you have a look at the players, they've got Decore was at Watford. The Celsio yeah. Hoyter was on loan at Spurs. You know, I think he's done a great job to get there. Yeah, uh, he, he's done incredible. When you, I mean, they certainly punch above their weight. I mean, man for man, you know, you wouldn't think that, uh, they, you know, any or maybe one of the Villarreal players would get into the Liverpool team. But, yeah. you know, they, they defended doggedly. But, they, but you know, their game plan, when Liverpool scored those two goals, they weren't quite sure what to do. They couldn't, they couldn't really get the ball forward anyway. Yeah. So I think Liverpool will be very... We'll be pretty happy with Denmark. and if Villarreal come to try and attack in the second leg, I think Liverpool will tear them apart. So, um, you know, I mean, Klopp is sensible. He's not going to think that it's all over, but I think that they, they've got one foot in the final. There's no yeah, question. I agree. So an English, all English final again, Steve? Uh, yeah, it could well be. You know, and it's uh, you know, it's great for English football. But you know, I've said before, I don't always like all English finals because yeah. you just like you feel like you're watching a, a, another Premier League game. But it's incredible that it could be uh, you know Liverpool City. You know, basically battling for everything this season. Yeah. So it's uh, you know, I, I won't be at all. So I think at the moment, you know, the favourites is uh, Liverpool and City. But you know, it, you know, Madrid at home in the semi-finals, anything could happen. Yeah, Vinicius Jr. and Benzema. Won't be hard to, will be difficult to stop. Steve, Europa League tonight. There's a couple of good games on. West Ham at home to Eintracht Frankfurt. That won't be easy for the Hammers. Not, not at all, especially as West Ham have got some injury problems at the back. Uh, you know, 
know, they're hoping that they'll have more than just one fit centre half, Craig Dawson. And I think that, you know, that could be a problem for them. But, you know, they've got to look to get a result tonight. Uh, Frankfurt, uh, you know, not, not setting the uh, Bundesliga alight, but, uh, you know, we know well they did uh, <laughs> winning in at, uh, at the new Camp. So, I think, Sam, if they could sneak a one goal uh, advantage, I think they'd be happy with that. Yeah, have Rangers got much of a chance against RB Leipzig? Yeah, I mean, look, again, they, they punched above their weight, really. I mean, obviously, beating Dortmund earlier uh, was an incredible result. You know, they, they will go there thinking they've got nothing to lose. Uh, Leipzig are a decent side. I, I think if Rangers come away uh, with no worse than maybe a one-goal deficit, you know, they're, they're, in, they're still in with a shout. But I think it's going to be a tough, tough uh, night for them. Yeah, the game I'll be watching, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying it too loud, there'll be uh, Leicester City against Roma in the Europa Conference League. How do you see that going? Yeah, yeah, and that's going to be a. I mean, Rome, for me, I think over the two legs, I, I fancy Roma. Yeah. I think Leicester have got to be really at their best, really at their best. I mean, although they they are not going to get a top four place in Syria, they they have they don't lose many, and uh, they got some good players, um, you know, under Mourinho. And I think mm -hmm. it's interesting. I was watching uh, a Brent's interview, basically saying the best coach he's ever worked for is uh, Mourinho. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be tough. Left have to be at their absolute best, I think, to, to miss over two legs. But it's a shame these matches are at the same time. You know, there's some good games there. I'd like to be watching. Uh, I can watch two. Uh, three is beyond me. So. Oh, all right. So you're not in the Paul Lafferty class where you can watch three at a time. I know he's got two nice big screens and I think he watches a third on his computer. The reason I laughed is Man United played Chelsea tonight. I don't know if I'm going to watch that, having watched United over the last few weeks. What's your call on that game, Steve? Yeah, and I see that United have got half a dozen players out. Um, you know, whether they're, they're injured or, or they wouldn't be playing them. If it's someone like Pogba, you know, he's evidently injured. But, you know, why would you play him anyway? Yeah. It made no sense to the fact that he doesn't want to be there. Uh, Maguire has is, is been rest injured. Um, you know, I, it's... You don't know what you're going to get with either of those teams. I thought United played a bit better in the last the second half, but yeah. uh, you know the game was the game was pretty much over anyway. But um, I, again, I won't be watching it. I, I can I can see United holding them, but, but Chelsea seem to be playing better away from home. Um, they got nothing they got nothing to lose, you know, but having a go. So you know it could be another painful night, and I think that would put pain to United's fourth place dreams altogether. Yeah. Guaranteed, I don't see us winning tonight. Steve, uh, the weekend, uh, one big game. If ever there's Liverpool are going to slip up in the league, I think it could be at St James's Park against Newcastle. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of Newcastle have had this incredible run, uh, taking them up to ninth, and at home particularly, uh, you know, the, you know, they're obviously safe. The crowd will be behind them, you know, thousand screaming Georges. I think Liverpool know what they've got to do they, they go there the only thing is I mean obviously you know it's a Saturday lunchtime game and yeah. we know that you know these can be notoriously uh, difficult I still think Newcastle will be favourites I mean City will be uh, watching hoping that uh, you know that extra one day that they've uh, that they they haven't had Liverpool to recover yeah. but I don't think second half particularly last night was, was so taxing for them and he took, took a few players off Klopp yeah. I, you know, I think that they'll be up for it and I'd be very surprised if they don't win but, uh, yeah. You know, yeah that was all I thought would... ago, we would have been saying it's a banker yeah. So. yeah no I just thought that was my only thing last night big game pressure lunchtime kickoff. I think the league hasn't done them any favours but uh, the league doesn't do anybody any favours other game I think should be quite a good game is Southampton Crystal Palace how do you see that going yeah yeah, I mean, Southampton came back quite strongly. I thought they were two down at Brighton, but uh, Ward Prowse does what he does best and uh, killed in a free kick and then got another in the same half. Palace, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're not mathematically safe, but they are safe, really. I mean, they're just doing it. Uh, you know, they will work hard and they're a hard team to beat. So I think it'll be a close game. I don't think it'll be many goals, but I think it'll be a close game. I could, um, Southampton could edge it, but it'll only be by a goal. All right. Watford, Burnley. Surely Watford don't get a result here. They're gone. Not that they aren't gone. Yeah, well, I, I think. I, I, well, I think you know it'd be hard to see them staying up. They've lost ten at home in a row. Yeah. This is this is an opportunity for Burnley to put some daylight between them and Everton before Everton play. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it's conceivable if Burnley win this, they go five points clear of Everton, and that, that really is going to put pressure on on Frank Lampard, especially when they're you know they're playing Chelsea on Sunday. Mm. I, I I think this is a tough one. I think this is an you know we thought Burnley were going to win at Norwich and they came unstuck. Yeah. As you say, it's Watford's last chance to to, to do anything. I think Burnley will be too strong. Okay. Um, Watford just can't keep a clean sheet, and Burnley have have kept sort of three in their last four games, so. I fancy Burnley to, to get there and, and win. I don't think it's very pretty, but I think uh, I think they'll get the result. Okay, you mentioned Chirley, uh, Chelsea earlier. How do you see them going at Goodison Park against Everton? Yeah, well, I mean, again, see, look, they've got a they've got a game tonight and another game. They've got a big squad. You know, yeah. you, you probably will rotate a bit. You know, this is I'd say do or die for Everton. But if but if Watford uh, lose at home to Burnley, Everton can't afford to lose this one because five points. You know, behind, and they only have one game in hand. You know, they've got to show the sort of fight they did against United. Um, you know, I can't see them winning Everton, but you know, they could hold Chelsea. Only, yeah. you know, purely for the fact that Chelsea have got a tough game tonight. But you know, I think this is. You know, they've been very disappointing Everton. Uh, at home, they're showing a bit of fight, but away, they just they're just rolling over too easily. So, you know, this is this is a crucial weekend, I think, for Everton and Frank Lampard. Yeah, don't forget, Chelsea may throw a bone for the old star man, but uh, you never know. And last but not least, a big game, London, West Ham versus Arsenal. Yeah, but again, you know, it's it's one of these. West Ham have got a really big game tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got they've got to leave. They're going to leave everything out on the pitch. This is it for them. Um, I, you know, I think fourth place is done for them. Whereas for Arsenal, you know, are come at it, going to come at it fresh after a couple of good wins. I, I fancy Arsenal to be favourites here and, uh, and get the result. Get the job done, eh? All right, Steve, on to the Championship. We haven't got uh, many rounds left in it. Uh, we'll start the lunchtime kickoff. I've left the Friday night game, QPR Sheffield United, at because Barnsley Preston's in our pools. Can my boys get a result? Well, a lot. I mean, they obviously came very unstuck the other night. Yeah. Hopes Blackburn were well and truly uh, outplayed by them. Barnsley, you know, down, their manager's gone, the assistant manager's gone. You know, they've got nothing to play for apart from a bit of pride. Uh, you know, Preston have made themselves hard to beat generally, although obviously they've lost their last two quite heavily now. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be at all. You, you could perm any one, two, three here because you don't know what you're going to get. Neither of them have got anything to play for apart from a bit of pride. I think Preston Cup could come back there. It could easily, easily be a draw. All right. Thanks for the confidence in my boy, Steve. Uh, the big game in the championship is one you're hoping ends in a draw is Blackburn versus Bournemouth. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, Blackburn have given themselves uh, a small chance because they're three points behind Sheffield um, Bournemouth, you know, incredibly, were 3-0 down at Swansea yeah. the other night, came back and absolutely, from what I saw, the, the highlights after, they completely battered Swansea. I mean, they, they did everything. Uh, you know, they had like 22 shots, uh, most of them in the second half, and they scored three goals. They probably could have won it. So I think they're going to go... They know that Forrest are breathing down they, they can't afford to slip up. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Bournemouth get a result, but if Blackburn hold them, I think it would be you know, obviously fantastic for us, but I just fancy Bournemouth just going to be a bit too strong. Okie dokie. Uh, Blackpool versus Derby County. Is it wind out of the Derby sales? Uh, I think so now. And Blackpool, uh, you know, f finished quite strongly. They had six, they scored six at home on their last home game. I fancy them to, to win this. I think, you know, Derby have put a lot of effort in, but I think it's, you know, it was beyond them. And I think Blackpool will finish, want to finish strongly at home, and I fancy that as the home banker. Okay, Middlesbrough got a good result last night. You see that continuing at home against Stoke City? Yeah, I think so. I think it'll be, you know, Stoke are a funny side. I mean, they've yeah. won a couple recently, obviously not going anywhere in the league. Borough were very disappointing up until last night. Um, they've given themselves again a small chance. I mean, they were favourites to get into the playoff place, but didn't win in five games. So uh, I, I think you know they realise they have to win tomorrow, just and hope that results go well for them above them. Yeah, I agree. And not Forest, who you watched, who you witnessed in midweek. Will they beat Swansea? Yeah. yeah, they should do. I mean, Swansea plays some nice football, but yeah. uh, you know, once Forest get ahead, you know, they'll be hard to break down and. 
uh, you know, they know that they it's in their own hands because uh, if Forest win their last uh, three games, they will probably go up, you know, because one of them is at Bournemouth next yeah. next Tuesday. So uh, I think they'll win. You know, they've got the momentum. Whether they go up automatically or they do it by the playoffs, you know, they they are the team to beat in the, at the moment. I think. All right, Steve. Pressure time as always. Your best bet and value bet, please. I'm going to go for Blackpool as yeah. my best bet. I think they're going to finish strongly at home. Uh, and my value bet, I, you mentioned it earlier, but is, is QPR Sheffield United. I think I think they, they want to finish strong at home, QPR. Um, Sheffield United had a bit of a wobble. They've got, they, they're have got under a bit of pressure, Sheffield, with teams breathing down their neck. Yeah. I fancy QPR to, to, put, to, to win at home on, the, on their last home game. All right, well, if... Makes you happy, Steve. I'm siding with you with your best bet in Blackpool. Well, I've made Burnley my best value bet at 18 to 10. Yeah. I think that's a great price, yeah? especially with what's on the line. Yeah. Yeah. But Steve, uh, you know, as we know, yeah, yeah. there's always a shock. So uh, there's a, you know, starting tonight is going to be quite quite an interesting week. A, a lot of things will could be decided in the next few days. Yeah, no doubt. Hopefully, Fulham win the trophy, Steve, and you can celebrate without having to panic on Monday. But uh, it As would always. be nice, but I, but I think I think yeah, absolutely. I think we'll do it on Monday, whatever happens. But yeah. uh, you know, it will. Yeah, it'll be nice to see that. And the players, the players want want to win the trophy. Yeah, you know? guaranteed. I mean, I mean, you know, they, I mean, I wouldn't say you know people think they've taken their foot off the gas. I wouldn't say they have. But you know, there's the other side of it is you know they know they've won the league. You know, they know they they're going up. Yeah. So you know, I guess the intensity wasn't quite there as it should have been. But yeah. uh, no, I think you know. Yeah. No, so, you, yeah, yeah, next time, done. this time next week, hopefully you'll no, you'll be up. Yeah, Steve, I just think the word is uh, urgency, you know, when you're in it, when you, you know, when you need it badly, everyone's alive, you know, you, uh, you know, you say, but yeah. it tends to be the same thing, but uh, I don't see Bournemouth beating Blackburn, so uh, I think you'd be sailing through anyway. Yes, yeah, no, listen, I'll be, I'll be uh, glued to the, uh, the TV on Saturday afternoon, what, what, waiting for those, some of, waiting for that result to come through. All right. Steve, thanks as yes. always, and we'll speak to you Pleasure. soon. All the Cheers, best. Steve. Yeah, take care. Bye. <clears throat> Gav, I've got to go back to the Man United Chelsea game tonight. But how do you, how I do think you most, see of the, it? most of the United fans are resigned to the fact that the season is long gone for us and a difficult game for us. I think uh, Chelsea have also. Uh, Rudy goes leaving them, so that's thrown a bit of a span on their camp. But United, you just can't see anything happening at United at the moment. It's just. Oh. It's like everybody's resigned that the season's over and, and let's just go on holiday. But as seasoned professionals and international players, it's absolutely shocking. Uh, I look at it a different way. You know, if I'm one of those guys who are on the team, this is my chance to get in the team for next season. You know, you've got to be uh, the application should be the best thing in your mind at the moment. Yeah, but I don't think they have they don't have much of a formation of what they're playing. Yeah. I've been waiting six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks. Watching the new coach come out and say, we've got a pressing game, we're going to do this, and nothing materialises. Yeah. We're either too far up the pitch or we're too open on the pitch. Um, and I keep saying, if we play Fred and, and uh, like Tom and together, both of them, I mean, it's just pathetic. Yeah. One can't pass, one can't tackle. I mean, it's just crazy. They both yeah. don't create, so... And then you've got struggling. a German professor who's lecturing everybody. I've never heard of 4 2, two, two but anyway, hopefully the new Dutchman coming in Next uh, season, Eric Ten Hag will clear that up. We'll go across to the uh, Premiership fixtures, which kicks off uh, Saturday lunchtime. Big game, Gab. Yeah, I think can this is, Newcastle I think this, upset? I think this is Liverpool's uh, season on the line here. If they yeah. get past Newcastle, then it's, it's just down to the wire. Um, both City and Liverpool, fantastic, fantastic season from both of them. Yeah. They, you know, they like you as ahead of the rest of the teams in the league. Uh, but this is a difficult game. I mean, the Geordies are believing that, uh, what's that, seven, eight games in a row that they've won. Six home they, games. They are firing at the moment, and there's going to bring an expectation to the stadium um, where the Liverpool supporters are going to get drowned out with the noise. Yeah. And that could put a little bit of pressure because, you know, Liverpool semi-finals, yeah. they played the one leg, they've had the FA Cup, they've had five big games in a row. And um, maybe, maybe, you know, Newcastle can get something. I think Liverpool have to score early to try and quieten the crowd a bit, but I'm, I'm leaning towards Newcastle to get something. Yeah? Well, I'm brave, but I'm going to do it. Every Man United fan and Man City fans with you, Gab, but I just look at Man Liverpool's firepower. <laughs> I know, you know three of the top five, their midfield don't cover too much ground at the back. 
And the goalkeeper, Ellison, he's, abs- he's outstanding. Yeah, they're, so. top, they're, they're three strikers. They just rotate they them. Rotate and Jota, them. I think, has had an excellent season for them. Yeah. And he's sitting on the bench. Uh, Firmino yeah. is sitting there as well. I mean, they just keep rotating those boys and they, they're just firing. I mean, Liverpool are a really good side. Yeah, but uh, I agree. Early kickoff, Wednesday game, Champions League. This could be the needle in the haystack. Now, Aston Villa, Norwich, as bad as Aston Villa have been in the last five games, taking one point, surely they've got to beat Norwich. Yeah, they've got to win. Yeah, Steven Gerrard came into there and he, uh, I thought there was the, they got a couple of results early and I thought, well, yeah, they go, they're going to climb the ladder and then they've just fallen flat. So, I mean, I'm going to lean towards a draw in this game. Um, okay. Norwich, Norwich are fighting, even though they're going down, and I think they've had a couple of seasons where they've been up down. They know what's expected. Yeah. They will just go out and play. Um, can they create and win a game away from home? I'm not sure, but maybe a draw will be the yeah, result. They could have yeah. won at Old Trafford, hadn't they? Yeah. But the gayer, but there again, that's not saying much. It's time that Steven Gerrard got things back on track. I think the good things, 4-10 to 10 is a bit short. Now, I'm looking forward to the Southampton Palace game. Palace should have beat Leeds on Monday. So uh, Surprising. After Southampton uh, got six from Chelsea, I thought that was their season done. They, mm. Then they bounced back straight away. And then on the other side, Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. Yeah. One of the most difficult teams to play against, I think. They're physical, they rough you up a little bit, they tackle hard. Uh, improved, and uh, Patrick Vera's done a wonderful job with that team at the moment because they were really bottom six, bottom seven. They're looking like a real mid-tier table and pushing up. Tough game, but Ward Price, I don't know how nobody's come yeah. and taken that boy away from Southampton yet. But a difficult game. I'm going to lean towards the home team to get a result. Yeah, like so. I, don't, I just think it's tight. I think there's goals in this. I think both teams are capable. I think the draw is a big player, but uh, you know I've got a funny feeling for Palace in this game, but it could go anyway. Gab, Burnley's my best value bit of the weekend. Yeah, got to be. 18 to 10, and we're missing something? You know, when Dash left, I thought they've really shot themselves in the foot, yeah. you know. But maybe they just need a bit of refreshing. Um, maybe somebody different in the change room giving you a different instruction. Is, yeah. It's just revitalised them a little bit. Watford are gone. I can't see Watford surviving. So I'm going to go towards, towards Burnley. Uh, tough game, it's bottom tier. You might have a cracking game. You know, both teams got nothing to play for. Well, they've yeah. got everything to play for, but between the two of them, uh, and Burnley, I think, maybe can shade it because they're showing a little bit more form, yeah. form at the moment. Uh, they've kept two clean sheets, and that's the format for staying up. And Watford, it's last chance to do, and they'll have a go, but I just think Burnley will roll them. Now, two teams I can't get my head around, Wolves and Brighton. If I was having a bet, which I'm not, it would be on the draw. How do you see it? Yeah, I think once Wolves... Um, Realised they couldn't make top four, top five. Their season just it just ended there. Uh, their last couple of games have been poor. I thought they they're not a bad side, Wolves. And in Brighton, they picked their game up after beating um, was the Spurs in the last minute. So their season seems to have turned, and they're going up again because they went through a patch where they couldn't win a game or score a goal. Um, tough game. Um, I'm going to stick my neck in and say Brighton's my value bet for the weekend. Okay, 18 to 10. Gap. Nothing wrong with that. This is a decent price. On to the second page where we've got Leeds United versus Man City. What I saw from Man City Tuesday night, I don't see them getting beat by Leeds, do you? No, geez, on, on the performance during the week, I mean, they, they were giving Real Madrid a real lesson. And then you say Benzema steps up and the game changes once again. But, you know, Man City just keep possession of the ball, so it makes it hard for you to score and get the ball from them. Leeds will put all their efforts in, but Man City just too slick. Yeah. Too slick. I think both... City and, and uh, Liverpool go to the end of the season unbeaten. Looks like it, so get your hands on that. But, uh, you know, just watching Crystal Palace at Leeds on Monday, you know, Palace were all over them. I know Leeds had one or two moments, but they've become a, a defensive team as opposed to that Bielsa ball where yeah. everybody flew forward and I don't see them upsetting Man City. Can Everton Oof. roll Chelsea. Well, I tipped uh, Everton to go down about a month ago, and they haven't <laughs> convinced me either that, they, that they're going to stay up. I think if Chelsea come to United and win tonight and then go to the weekend, they don't really in a positive frame to beat Everton. Everton will be throwing everything at them. Yeah. You know, they will be attacking. They'll, they'll do everything to try and win the game. But if Chelsea just play their normal game. I mean, it should be it should be over. I mean, Chelsea yeah. are a good side. Lukaku, I see he's battling. You know, we. When he left United, we all said he was a terrible player. Got goals, but he comes back to Chelsea and he can't play. He's yeah. back to his normal self again. But he might get a he might get a one a start. He might want to show that he can play. But uh, I think the manager for Chelsea is feeling the pressure a little bit of their season uh, falling away. But I think he'll want to end. So I'm going to go with Chelsea. 
Seven to ten does look a good bet, but obviously have a look at what happens tonight. Only thing in Everton's favour, they've won two and drawn one of the last three. And I was impressed with the fight they showed against Liverpool. I know the Richarlison was falling all over the pitch, but they just seemed a little bit more desperate. And I was impressed with what that. If Chelsea don't come with that same attitude, yeah. be careful. But Chelsea can hurt you from from midfield shift to the front. Yeah. Well, I don't think Everton. You know, they, they, I think Richarlison will get sent off in this game because he's he's just trying so hard yeah. and, he, and he puts his feet in the wrong place. But they were Everton were unlucky. They should have got a penalty against Liverpool. Might have yeah. changed things for them. Yeah. So something worries me about that game. Now, Tottenham we were woeful against Brentford and even worse against Brighton. You think they rebound against a Leicester team who are nowhere in Europe but have got a big game against Roma in the Europa Conference League tonight? Yeah, I think, I think Spurs will win this game, but their season two seems to be falling apart. Whenever they had a chance to take the top four spots, it just seemed to crumble around them. You know, yeah. They would draw, United would draw, they would lose, United would lose. They just didn't have that. They just don't have, there's something missing on that team. I don't know if it's the goalkeeper and he's going to be the Kelly Zill in another conversation about the World Cup. But Spurs just, they just can't get over the line for me. They've got a, two great uh, pairings up front with uh, Kane and Song. Um, Leicester coming from their game during midweek. I'm going to lean towards Spurs to win this one. Yeah, I think they should win. Also, I think the main reason being Leicester playing in the Europa League, if, regardless of the result, he's got to rest his better players for 100%. the following week. Now, West Ham, who play a big game, Antrack Frankfurt tonight, the London Stadium, against their bitter rivals, Arsenal. Now, Steve's all over Arsenal. My only concern with this is West Ham don't get beat at that London Stadium too often. Four wins and two draws in the last six. There's a lot of, I wouldn't say hatred, but not too much like between the two teams. Are you with Arsenal? Yeah, I'm with Arsenal this, on this game. I think uh, West Ham have got too many injuries at the moment. I think the whole back four is basically yeah. suspended or injured. I think Arsenal, with the youthful Arsenal team, they, they kicked on nicely. You didn't think they were going to make top four, then all of a sudden they went through a patch of three, three losses. Uh, Arteta seems to get them playing again. The and they've got some nice young players. Um, and the secret to the Arsenal team is that they've got the legs. Yeah. When you've got youngsters in your team and are playing internationals already at like 22, 23, they're going to hurt West Ham. And I think West Ham, just with the injuries at the back, will cost them. So I'm going to lean towards Arsenal at 8 to 10. Yeah, just it's hard to trust Arsenal. I know they beat United 3-1, but United could have had two penalties. For me, the third goal should have been disallowed. He was interfering with the Kaya. And if Bruno scores a penalty, it's 2-2. Yeah, they, they are no certainties at 8-10. to 10. I think that's why they're 8-10. to 10. But the reason, like Tottenham are favourites, is the other teams are in Europe. But I don't trust Arsenal. I agree with Gavin that, you know, they should win. But I just don't trust them. And last but not least, Monday night, is this the upset of the weekend? Brentford to beat Man United? <laughs> but I think anybody would love to play Man United at this stage of the league if they're looking for points um, and having a chance. You know, that old fortress that we had is now long gone and broken down. Um, Brentford will come there with a fighting chance. Yeah. I think if you're not to get a result against Chelsea, I think they'll beat Brentford. If they lose to Chelsea, it's just going to be another Monday night game where they're going to go through the motions and let the season just put it out. But like I say, you want to fight for your, for your position and show the new coach that you've got something. But oh, the mood must be really a damper in the change yeah. with United. So I'll give Brentford a chance on that. But coming to Old Trafford, this shouldn't really be a contest, I would think. On, yeah, a, normal, on, well. a, normal, on a normal day. Nah, you know, for me, Ericsson's <clears> been the signing <throat> of the summer. He's come back and saved this season. If he's going to cruise around and get space, take poison, that he's going to create something. And they'll score Brentford, both teams to score. But... I can't have Man United. I think it was 15 to 10 or 13 to 10 Brentford in the draw. Let's see what happens with United tonight. But uh, I can't have Man United, yeah. sad to say. On to the championship where I'll cover this on my own. We kick off with uh, QPR, Sheffield United. Sheffield United were going well. They're in sixth place, but they've only won two of the last six. Away from home, they're winless in five. QPR, Steve said earlier, they've got to finish the season strong. But likewise, they've lost six out of eight and three out of four at home. This could go either way. I took nine to ten, both teams to score. But uh, taking even money, Chef United's not for me. I'm all over my beloved hometown of Preston North End. Barnsley have fired their manager. They've already been relegated, chopping and changing. They got beat 2 at home by Blackpool in midweek. 
While Preston got outplayed by our local rivals, Blackburn, we haven't been bad away from home. I think we'll win 14 to 10, I think it's a great price, especially if we have something to play and Barnsley haven't. Blackburn, Bournemouth. Blackburn cemented my boys on Monday, <coughs> winning 4-1. I think they're going to give Bournemouth a good game here. Blackburn, last chance saloon to get to the playoffs, where Bournemouth know that if they don't win, Notts Forest could, could take over the second spot. Both teams to score to me, 8 to 10 is a certainty. I like Blackburn of the two teams. Bournemouth's strength was keeping clean sheets. They've been conceding for fun lately. And up in the northwest, I'm expecting an upset. Blackpool's my best bet of the weekend. Going well at home, won three of the last five. Derby have lost nine away league games in a row. Already relegated. They had a great show, but I think this is just a step too far. So I'm all over Blackpool. On to our next page. Bristol City, Hull City. Goals definitely is the way to go here. Bristol City, you know, they're in and out team. They're a team that have always performed better away from home than at home. That's why of the two teams, I like Hull City going well. I only lost to Millwall away from home in the last six. But the easiest solution for me there is to go for goals. Cardiff City got beat last night by Middlesbrough. They've lost five of the last six. But playing a Birmingham City side, they've only won one of eight. This could go either way. Another game where both teams to score at 8.5 to 10 was my suggestion, and that's the way I'm going to keep it. Coventry, Huddersfield. Huddersfield, having watched them early on in the year, I can't believe they're in fourth place. They're going great. They've won four and drawn one of the last five. But Coventry are a Mickey Mouse team. They can shock the best and lose to the worst. So anything's possible in this particular game, but I don't see Huddersfield losing. Middlesbrough hadn't won in five until last night. And against the Stoke City team, who had won five and lost two of the last seven, I was looking at going Stoke City in the draw, but with Middlesbrough having won last night and having one eye on that sixth playoff place, I'd have to chance Middlesbrough in the exotics. Our final page in the championship is Millwall Peterborough. Millwall always difficult to beat at the den. The posh have been relegated, so six to ten should be in all your bets. Well, Notts Forest, having won at, at uh, Fulham, in midweek, I think they're a good bet to beat a Swansea City side who are unbeaten in nine. But Notts Forest at home, if you can remember, beat Arsenal at home. They beat Leicester City at home. They've won the last six league games. So you've got to fancy Notts Forest to get a result. Last two games, Reading West Brom. Paul Lynch has done a great job at Reading. When he took over, they were in the relegation playoff zone. You know, they've come back and they've won two, drawn one and lost one of the last four at home. Steve Bruce didn't get the kick that West Brom fans were hoping. But uh, they've done all right. But I wouldn't be taking 15 to 10. I think both teams to score is the right play. But 24 to 10 is a suggestion in the outright market. And last but not least, if Fulham win the league on Saturday, I'm going to be taking Luton Town, who are in fifth place, to win or draw at 15 to 10. But if Fulham need to win... To secure the league title, I think they'll do it easily. Over two and a half goals, I saw eight and a half to ten. So that's my suggestion either way, but I'll be waiting. But five to ten, Fulham is short, especially if they've already been crowned champions. Gav, the PSL. I watched Chiefs against Gold Narrows last night. In fairness to Kaiser Chiefs, they didn't deserve to lose, but defensively. Yeah, but they're having, they're having one of those seasons where nothing's going for them. I, I, I'm looking at the state of the pitches that some of the, the, yeah. that they're playing on. It's terrible, um, bouncy and wet. I know we've had a lot of rain in KZN, but yo, the, the the state of the pitches are really bad. The PSL should be looking into something like that. Yeah. But Chiefs really um, should be higher, higher and firing and beating teams like Golden Arrows. They're yeah. also going through some changes, but that just sums up Chiefs' season. They hit and miss every now and again. Yeah, no, very disappointed. The goal they scored was outstanding. You know, Castro played in the billiard. You know, Keegan Dolly, some player. You can see he's played. He played at Montpellier in League One. His vision, but if you can't defend, and they're trying to play it from the back, and the problem is the centre halves on the ball are making the wrong decision, yeah, 100%. playing it into midfield when they shouldn't be, and that's what's costing them. But. Uh, Orlando Pirates nil, Chipper nil, you know, Pirates... I think they had a bit of a hangover from the, the, the Confederations, the, the Confederations Cup, victory, Cup yeah. game they had. Um, but also a stutter and flat to deceive. But you would expect it, uh, Pirates at home um, to win a game. Again, pitch in a bad condition, yeah. but it wasn't a bad game. Yeah. Very few chances uh, 
Um, just a few crosses coming in and nothing special in the game. But Pirates should have won it. They had two good chances to actually score and they missed. Um, to the Sundowns game, uh, they were just going, going through the motions yeah. uh, halfway through the game. That Loftus pitch that they're playing on had rugby there the week yeah. four was, was a shocker. Uh, was, it was, was so wet as well. Um, but they just needed a point, which they yeah. got. I mean, they've still got five games to go. I think it is in the league and they've wrapped it up already. Shows you their dominance in the South African yeah, league. They are a good team. And that's five, leagues, five league uh, titles in a row. I mean, yeah. special team they are. You know, you can see the CAF getting knocked up. Uh, Petra Duluanda, the Angolan team on the weekend. The players, you know, you've got a big game. Now you've got to mm -hmm. play a game that it doesn't mean anything. That was their season. They got knocked out. And even after the final whistle, they, they celebrated, but it was, oh, well, let's get this over yeah. and done with. So uh, well done to the guys, Mongoba, Mongita, and, and the management team. They've done a great job. They are a good team. They should have won, but they're again. I'm a, I've always been an Eric Tinkler man. His teams play good football. Mm -hmm. And they had good chances. We have one game in the PSL this week. Kaza Chiefs, Cape Town City. Gav? Well, <laughs> Chiefs need to bounce back, don't they? They need to really get themselves... Uh, I know it's coming towards the end of the season, but you're at home in front of your fans and you need to get a result. The Chiefs of old, uh, the supporters would demand that they get a result. Uh, Baxter's been kicked out of the team, so uh, I think it's Dylan Shepard has taken over. Yeah, Dylan, so the players yeah. maybe trying to get used to his little speech in the change room. So, again, Cape Town City, not an easy team to beat. They won't roll over and just say, because we're playing Chiefs, we're going to give it up. Um, they want to prove a point against Chiefs like everybody else wants to do. Um, one, two, and drawn two of their last four games away from home. So, Cape Town City, maybe get another point here. Yeah, Gab, just having watched the two teams last night, one is a team and one is a team going through the motions. I looked this morning before we came to the studio, 28 to 10, I saw Cape Town City. Gav, I'm going to be having a few rand. 12, Chiefs were 12 to 10. I think uh, win and draw Cape Town City was 7 to 10. <coughs> to me, that's a gift. I don't see Cape Town City losing the Chiefs. Chiefs, shame. The players are trying, but I don't know. I think it's Arthur's one who's taken over him with Dylan Shepard. The players, they're playing, but I just think yeah. it's let's get the season end over with. Yeah, some of these big teams, be it the Premiership or be it local soccer, you get to a stage in the league where you can't win anything and it's yeah. like, well, let's just go to training and let's just have a five-a-side knock around and get ourselves to the games and then we finish the season. I think that maybe that's what's happened to Chiefs. They've just taken the foot off the pedal. They know they can't win mm. anything. Um, but players must understand, you're a professional. You need to go out there week in and week out to perform. You know, People are paying money to come and watch you play. Yeah. Uh, but it just gets into your head that you, you just can't get yourself up for the game. And I think that's what's happened to Chiefs at the moment. But the other thing is, could you imagine if the management had their attitude in paying you as you have to them when you're playing? You know, you want the money at the end of the month, so yeah. you get out there and you give it your best. Gab, semi-final the cup, Ned Bank. Now, TTM, Shakuma Mudsy, that's the team that bought Bidvest Vits. The owner got into trouble. He's ended up selling it a proud franchise like Bidvestwitz, TTM took over. They are now 13th in the first division. They're only a couple of points from getting relegated a game. Now they're playing Maruma Gallants. I love watching this team. They've got two little midfield players. Can they play? Is that Dan so local derby, team? That's Dan's team. Well, I'm going with Dan. You're Maruma going with Dan, my Maruma man. Gallans. I think they're an old teammate of ours, very really organized, always very vocal in the change room. Good player, Dan. Uh, yeah. I think he's taken it to his team. He's got a bit of experience behind him now as a coach. Um, he's won this, this cup, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. when he beat Chiefs in the final. Um, so I, I would be going Maruna Gallants. Because like you say, TTM had just fallen away. Yeah. It's uh, a real sad when you see a big team like the old bits just falling away. And I don't think they'll be around much longer if they keep going the way they are. Yeah. But Maruna Gallants for me will win this. Yeah, the only thing TTM have in their favor is they knocked out Super Sport and Golden Arrows in two of the previous rounds, but uh, both were at home. The thing is, Maruma gets a local derby, so there's no home ground advantage to Yondo. Yeah, but, it could uh, be a real battle there. I think the players will get stuck in, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you, 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 you pitch up for a cup game, and sometimes good at getting away from the league. Yeah. Um, so, oh, yeah, Maruma, but Maruma Gallons, Dan will be organised. Yeah. I know well, Dan, you know, he's, this he's is a real winner. Glory. Yeah, he's a real winner, Dan. He want to get back in another final. And everyone um, loves a cup final. Yeah. Now, the big game is Royal AM against Mamelodi Sundowns. Now, Sundowns last night, you could see, I wouldn't say they weren't focused, but they were going through the motions to a degree. Royal AM come from Bloemfontein, 12 games 
unbeaten at home. Have they got a chance? They're not a bad side, but I've been no. watching them saying, oh, this team's going to fall away and the no, season no, started no. and uh, they're going to fall away and they just kept getting better and they got into the second in the log. Yeah. I think they're still second in the log. Uh, yeah. But Sundowns, look, they've won the, the title again five, yeah. five seasons in a row. Got to the CAF semi-finals. You, I mean, it's minnows versus the Giants, yeah. you know. I would, I would think that Sundowns have even money. Guys, it's a gift, but away from home against a Royal AM team that will be fighting yeah. to, to, to turn Sundowns over. But I'll be taking Sundowns. Yeah, I might agree. <laughs> even money does look a good bet. John Maduka, the uh, Royal AM coach, was at Celtic. They were always hard to beat. They'll be hard to beat too, but you've got to think Sundowns with the quality that they've got should win. On to our soccer exotics for Saturday. And we kick off with the Gold Circle Soccer Six. I'm going for one or two upsets here. I've thrown the draw in with Liverpool at Newcastle United. I think Aston Villa will be too good for Norwich City. I'm going the field in the East Southampton Crystal Palace match. I'm going for Burnley to win at Watford. I'm going the field in the Wolverhampton Wanderers Brighton fixture. And I'm throwing the draw and looking for the upset. I may be a million miles away. 2 1 6. On to our second soccer six. I'm going the field in the Chiefs Cape Town City game. I'm going Stuttgart, win and draw at home against Wolfsburg. Freiburg to avoid defeat at Hoffenheim. I'm going the field in the Sampdoria Genoa derby. I'm bankering Man City to beat Leeds United and Sundowns to beat Royal AM 2 1 6. On to our Gold Circle Soccer 10. I'm banking Liverpool to beat Newcastle. I'm going Preston North End, win and draw at Barnsley. Likewise, Villarreal, win and draw at Deportino, Deportivo, sorry, Alaves. I'm banking Aston Villa to beat Norwich City. The field of the Southampton Crystal Palace fixture. On to our second page, I'm chancing Burnley to win at Watford. The field in the Wolves-Brighton game. I'm going Real Madrid, who only need a point. Win and draw at home against Espanyol. I'm banking Man City to beat Leeds. I'm going Atletico Madrid, win and draw at Athletic Bilbao, 288. On to our Soccer 13, I'm banking Man City to win at Leeds. Aston Villa to be too good for Norwich City at home. I'm signing with Crystal Palace to avoid defeat at Southampton. Banking Burnley to win at Watford. I'm going Brighton Hove Albion, win and draw at Wolves. Going Blackburn Rovers, win and draw at home against Bournemouth. I think Notts Forest will be too good at home for Swansea. On to the second page, I'm banking Middlesbrough to beat Stoke City. Hull City win and draw away at Bristol City. Going Cardiff City to avoid defeat at home against Birmingham City. I think Huddersfield Town can avoid defeat at Coventry City. I'm banking Millwall to beat Peterborough. And I'm going West Brom win and draw at Reading 288. On to our budgies bets for the weekend. I'm going Burnley to beat Watford. Aston Villa to beat Norwich and both teams to score and Tottenham to beat Leicester City and both teams to score. Great price, 5,000 to 200. Our next bit are both teams to score and over two and a half goals in the Newcastle-Liverpool, Southampton-Crystal Palace, Everton-Chelsea, and Man United-Brentford fixtures, 4,900 to 200. Our next page is the team goals only. I'm going Aston Villa, Burnley, Crystal Palace and Chelsea, all to score over one and a half goals. I couldn't believe the price. 3,300 to 200. On to the championship, I'm going uh, Blackpool to beat Derby, Notts Forest to beat Swansea City, Preston North End to beat Barnsley, and I'm going over two and a half goals in the Fulham Luton Town match, 2,700 to 200. Uh, both teams to score comes from the championship where I'm going QPR Sheffield United, Blackburn Bournemouth, Bristol City, Hull City, Reading West Brom, and Fulham Luton as the extra, <coughs> extra side, 3,400 to 200. While our Collis King, six or Nexa, I'm going Aston Villa to beat Norwich, Man City to beat Leeds, Tottenham to beat Leicester, Blackpool to beat Derby. Preston to beat Barnsley and Juventus to beat Venezia, 3,100 to 200. Gav, you punt daily. What's your weekend call? Yeah, my weekend call this week, Budge, is uh, Brighton and Arsenal. I think those two, uh, 18 to away 10 teams, and 8 eh? to 10 away teams. And I'm gone with Middlesbrough in the championship. I think they, um, yeah. 
Uh, not a bad side, Middlesbrough. So at home, um, I think they'll get a positive result there. Yeah, desperate times at championship. Have a look and see who's got to play for something because it means extra special. There's nothing worse when a team has nothing to play and they just play the youngsters. To the guys in the last one standing competition, the four guys that are left, Saturday 11 o'clock is closing time. And to everyone else, please remember to stay on side.